recording. There we go. And so, of course, what we could do is we can go to blender.org, right? So remember, your site is blender.org, right? That's where you go. It's up on the board, right? Blender.org, right next to my name, right? Um, and you go right here, and you'll see on that very front page is the download section, although there is a download here as well, right? And you click on download. Now, if you can install this on your device, right? Like maybe you're just bringing your own laptop. Um, you can just download, right? Or you want to put it on your own computer, your own desktop at home. If you can install, right? If you have full administrator privileges, which usually if you own the computer, you do, you just do regular download. However, when it comes to our, our school computers, we don't necessarily always have that ability, right? So what we want to do is we want to go to the other versions right here. It's kind of a little lower. And you'll see there's one called Windows Portable Zip. So what you do is you click on that, and that simply downloads a zip file of it, right? So usually by default, it'll just download into your desktop, right? So if I just kind of go to, like, say, a browser area, uh, usually kind of this guy right down here, right? There's that little bottom thing that looks like folders, right? Like the little manila folders. Also, of course, your PC icon, if you have that available, is there. But when you double click or click on any of those, it brings these up, right? And you can see that there's little sections here like downloads. If I double click on downloads, you'll see that there is Blender. Now this is a zip file, right? So what you could do is you could just double click on it. And here's the folder. And what you could do is you could just simply just drag it down onto your desktop, right? Um, or if you want to do it the more traditional extract you can. Once you've done that, you'll then see there should be a Blender folder, right? You double click on that, and you'll see inside is the actual Blender icon. And you double click on that, and it loads it up. So in particular, if you're working on a device where you can't install it, you get, uh, grab the portable version, right? So there's that portable version. Now, this has already been installed. So at this point, OK, so you have to go to the library. OK, uh, so um, OK, uh, is it charged right now? OK, OK. Um, so uh, if you want, I'd say take the restroom pass to the library, because I think that's usually where the tech's at to get those things. Um, so I'd, I'd go there. All right. So, uh, so basically, remember, when you're kind of right in here, um, you'll see that this is what the splash screen looks like when you've already set up Blender, right? Um, usually, it'll kind of have different options down here. You'll see this splash screen, but it'll have different stuff down here. Usually, you'll see kind of like uh, language. Uh, and then below that is um, kind of usually your interaction method. It'll say Blender by default. It's a little pull down, so you click on that. Um, and you'll see there's the industry compatible option. Uh, but in general, um, you can either create something you've already started with. You can open if it's something that's not in your recent files. Or you just go new file general, and that creates your cube. Now remember, if you forgot to turn on industry compatible, you can always go to edit preferences. And in preferences, right, key map, right at the top here, you have industry compatible as one of your options. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, save and load, that's where auto saves at. So if you uh, want to double check that that's on, that's good. And remember, add-ons was one of the things that we kind of have been talking about a little bit the last uh, day or two as well. So if you go to the add-ons section, of course, you can install add-ons you download from elsewhere. Uh, we'll see that later in the term. But for right now, we just want to turn on the add-ons that Blender already comes with that are useful. And the big ones that I like are further down. So we just keep scrolling down. Modifier tools, I like turning that one on. And it's just a checkbox, right? So you just check it on. It's already there. It's already installed. You just have to check it on to tell Blender to show it in the interface, basically. Uh, Auto mirror, right? Edit mesh tools and loop tools. Those are kind of my big ones I like to have on right now. Uh, we'll talk about a few more ones we want to turn on later on. I'll show you how to install later on. Uh, but just kind of a handful of big things I just wanted to kind of briefly go over with you guys um, at the start of today uh, and just get a nice little video record for you guys. All right. So I'm going to stop the